I could just step out my cave entrance and almost sniff the hashish wafting over Persia to the Bay Road in my cave. Uh, and it was only a 10-day hitchhike. You're 20 years old, 10-day hitchhike. It's kind of like hitchhiking across, I guess, the United States or something like that. You know, rite of passage, but... Mm. And to do this, I always took advantage. There's a ferry crossing. You can go from Rhodos town to Marmaris, Turkey. It's only 12 kilometers between the two countries. Uh, it's like $5. And suddenly you're in, you're in Asia Minor. You're in the western wing of Asia. Uh, and off you go. So easy start. Uh, across Turkey, I'd hitchhike uh, to the Iran border at Bazargan. And uh, with luck, I could cross Iran in about four days, you know. Tabriz, Tehran, Meshat, three major cities on the way. And then you get out of Iran, up tight Iran and cross the border into <laughs> fabulous kingdom of Afghanistan, where you can get a chunk of hashish the size of an impossible burger. We're talking a veggie burger, big patty, a primo dark black moist Afghani, for 50 cents. 50 cents last year. Uh, well, this all sounds pretty predictable, you know, but wait. Uh, just wait a second here. Background within background. Very Arabesque you know, way of storytelling. Uh, my most soul-altering, otherworldly episode in my life happened in the remote Himalayas, which you can read all about in my memoir, There Are No Foreign People. It's all about that, really. Um, yeah, I was meditating in this windswept, windswept crumbling, weathered uh, Tibetan monastery built in 1911. 8,500 feet, fog rolling across the grassy courtyard. Oh, boy. Oh. I was 21, the year 1969. Oh, when naked goddess Earth appeared before me in a scintillating meadow. And in, a, in her other planetary body of light. And the best part about the vision was she was totally naked. And I'm 21. And she's... <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. started right away. Well, she more, more than just appeared. We fucked in the light worlds of the subtle plane. But more about goddess Earth, or Earthy, as she prefers to be called. Okay, back to the so-called here and now. All right. Yes, my spirit urges me to express by a profound spiritual pilgrimage. Like, dig deep, Earth man, for the most sacred, deep, deep <laughs> vibrations starting with your lower chakras and trying to blow your hat off through the crown chakra. Yeah, my soul and my inner goddess yearn to return to our Ganesh cave. I'm going to try to get her to come out of my body there. She's been hiding inside me for, for years now. So we can fuck in interdimensional oneness for the first time instead of up her place up in the clouds so to speak we can we can intercourse <coughs> on earth in the cave where nobody can see it <laughs> uh 
if you're confused, you know, just as you just walked off the street, you like looking at this. He, she, who, what, inner goddess, uh, what the hell is going on? Take a deep breath. You know, it's like, relax. This very extraordinary inter-identity trip will soon become crystal clear, even to straight people, you know, who work for a living. <laughs> yeah. Like, who hold on a regular job and commute to a cubicle to try to get off later on a bunch of money? I will clear it up for you, you know. Uh, and uh, you don't have to be from California. You know, you can be from Kansas, and you'll, you'll understand. Well, okay. Let's get this story, like, up in the air. Fasten my seatbelt. Why? Because I'm on a luxury Lufthansa, uh, eleven hour flight. It's nonstop. You go from San Francisco. You don't come down till you get to Munich. I mean, we disturbed a lot of air <clears throat> to get there. It's a mellow flight. I mean, these Germans they like the wine, right? Rhine River wine. Okay. Yeah, the Romans taught them viticulture. The Romans showed the Germans the Teutonic barbarians with hair, hairy, my hairy ancestors, in fact, how to make wine. Germans had some beer kind of stuff going on, you know, get silly, yeah, fall down. But when they hit the wine, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, endless wine, just like. You just you nod to your glass, and a stu stewardess is like, yes, yes, sir, you know, wow. And I like the TV screens, you know, big on the back of each seat with like 200 movies to choose from. So I just like kick back, hey, catch up on Hollywood, you know, put in the earbuds. And, you know, I think it was during the fourth movie that, I found myself well landing in München <laughs> Airport, International Airport. Yeah. Oh uh, well, it was cold. November. This ain't California anymore, Dorothy. You are in cold winter. You better know somebody or you're going to sleep and freeze your ass in a doorway and maybe not make it till morning kind of weather. But you know what I found out? That in the transit lounge of this trendy Munich airport, they have cappuccino machines. They just give this stuff away for free. Well, I slurp up a bunch of those, huh? And then, you know what? I just want to like, stop this story right in this direction. America really has a lot of catching up to do. America's playing catch up on a whole lot of shit. The Europeans are like already <laughs> hip to. Well, I just staying in, you know, I don't, don't have that much money, you know. I gotta, I gotta, I sleep across some seats in the transit lounge and, because uh, my flight to Athens is until the morning. So, uh, like my cat, I know the waking consciousness, way overrated. Just go to sleep as, as often as you can. Life gets a lot easier that way.